Next one, Ken Clark stuff. I know this looks like a drug deal going on, but that's basically the relationship Ken Clark and I have. He is my my uh, dealer. He throws things at me, and I bite on him. I go all out on him. Uh, he does phenomenal stuff. I think he's the one of the brightest minds out there as far as research is concerned. Uh, he and he's got experience because he is a researcher that coaches. He coaches teams. And he applies this stuff to his athletes. And so when he had this, he sat on this for a while. In fact, Chris Mang worked on him, worked with him on this. And he paid Chris Mang not to tell me anything, even though I knew he had stuff. And I was waiting, I was waiting, I was waiting. And Ken kept saying, well, the people that are supposed to review the paper, they're on COVID lockdown and they're not reviewing the paper. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Come on, give me this paper, Ken. He didn't. He played me, just like he always does. But anyway, I'm not going to go much into his paper because his whole presentation is on it. <coughs> but this is basically what we're looking at here. A split and reversal uh, of the legs. The carriage, to reduce the weight of the lever, the carriage is the swing leg and how well you fold that up to reduce the weight of the lever so you can swing that leg through faster so you can create more tangential to force, or what I call T-force. Uh, tangential to force, kids, I don't think that's a bad word, or uh, sexually transmitted disease. I just call it T-force, and then it, it's okay. Uh, and here's Ken's paper that I guarantee will be a phenomenal presentation, a phenomenal Q&A that I'm really looking forward to. And there's Chris Mang who helped him on it. I get credit for getting Chris Mang out to see him. I'm taking credit for that, even though it may not be true. So all that stuff that I mentioned, is it true? So after Ken wrote this paper and I read it, I actually got it two days before he released it. Ooh, thanks, Ken. I went through and I went onto YouTube, why not? And I'm looking to see the split stuff and see if it's true. And I thought Michael Johnson would have the least split of everyone, and he didn't. He had a decent split. Uh, Bolt didn't have the split that I thought he would have. And the women have phenomenal splits. And it might be because their hip size. So basically, I took my athletes, and I have a solid sprint group that comes three times a week. Uh, they have been my savior throughout COVID because I had a sense of normalcy where people came and trained with me. And I looked for drills that looked the same as the split as when they ran. And so I won't tell you this guy's whole story. It's a really a phenomenal story. Um, but here he is sprinting, and here he is doing one of the drills that we're going to do. And the split is going to be the same. So I'm looking for ways to increase that split, whether through strength, reflexes, or actual drills to change that distance. Um, we're going to start with basics. I'm going to mute this so you don't hear me yelling at my wife. Uh, this is a Franz Bosch drill. Uh, you put boxes on your sides so your hips don't bail out, so you don't get your distance because you bail out through your hips. So you've got to have pelvic stability. I have a water bag over top, which is going to take me side to side. I've got a box out in front where I've got to reach and use my hip flexion to come through to step up through the onto the box. And I've got to carry my calf to my hamstring to step through or else I'll trip. It looks easy because I'm a stud, but it's really quite difficult and it's a great basic exercise to work on this. The more difficult to make this, you can make this box higher in front or you can make it further out in front. So now we're going to create a longer split as you step through with that. That would be my basic exercise for this. And if, again, not again, but if you look at the Franz Bosch stuff, it really matches up well with what Ken Clark is proving. Um, here's an isometric. Again, we're going to try and change the split. This is Billy Fade. He is a really good marathoner that I've been training since high school. Um, but we're looking at the split here. Eventually, you'll take your hands off the wall, and you're just going to drive through the ball of that big toe to drive forward to get into that split position. Then we want to get strong in the stretch. Here's Marshall, Ugo, 
and Abdul, my home at Flossmore guys, they've they've been my crew. And so we're just gonna get strong in that split where Marshall's gonna get really wide into that split, and we're gonna go through eccentrics, do triphasic training through that split. This is a great exercise. They hate it, but it's a great exercise. Um, and then once we get strong, we want to be able to squeeze and relax. This is Michael Wangler. He's a sophomore. He will be a phenom. Um, and I changed how I teach this. Um, we're going to get into that split position like we're supposed to, and I'm going to tell him to actually drive that knee up so he drops down and then catch it. I found that coaching cue works much better in an exercise that I found very difficult to teach. Uh, we use this at home at Flossmore before meets and we got PRs every week. Uh, this was our, if we had a Friday night meet, this is what we did Thursday night. Or if we had a Saturday meet, we did it Friday night. Uh, I went away from it. I did it in 2009 at York and we got great PRs. I don't know why I went away from it the night before meet. And then to work on the carriage, this is the Darien Bar stuff, I think. But I'm going to try and squeeze my hamstring or my calf to my hamstring when I step through. As an old 52-year-old, I did this. I made it three steps and I cramped up like nobody's business. And you'll find people that have not great hamstring function will cramp up really quick. Listen to a little 38 special in the basement. Why not? And then we wanted to work on that leg snapping down. The faster that leg snaps down, the more velocity you're going to get. And that, again, that's Ken Clark's paper. And I think the faster that leg comes down, the more ankle and forefoot rock you're going to get just by the velocity coming through, which is what it's supposed to do. Which is why I think in some slower people, you're not going to see so much ankle rocker because there's no velocity coming through. Marshall loves this drill. This is his favorite drill. And then I'm going to make it long. So instead of pulling through, again, look at the split that Marshall has here. I've got a band around his foot rather than his thigh. And he's going to pull through. Now we're rocking out to Led Zeppelin. And now when we have that strength and that uh, knowledge of how to move through there, then we're going to try and overspeed it. Um, and here's Marshall in a, in a stretch, so he's a wide position. And again, Ken's paper talks about how fast you can reverse the thigh at its peak. And we're going to do that on a, on a mini trampoline. I think someone on social media said he's stomping on bugs. Maybe. When you're ready, come race Marshall down and we'll see how many bugs he stomps on. So to change the drill a little bit or change what we're going on, I'm going to call these drills Marshalls. And I call them Marshalls because before I even looked into this, Marshall would do this standing around waiting in line for fly tens. He would pop up and do these jumps. And again, we're looking at the split that he has and we're trying to increase that. And so I started calling these marshals. And so these became a staple of what we did this summer. And that's really basic, but you will find a lot of athletes can't do it. When we had our 20 practices with the home and Flossmore team this fall, we got together as a group and we saw people that just plain couldn't do it. But yet we're expecting to sprint fast. Um, so we'll do an assisted one so you can get more height and really focus on that split. And we're going to go off one leg so it's more like a, a sprint. Everyone loves French contrast for some reason. I think it's just the name. But here we are, French contrasting Marshall. You see Ugo struggling. 
And then here is the king. One of the king exercises, we call these banded marshals. So what we're looking at again is how fast can you bring that leg down to the ground? Green rubber band's fairly heavy. Marshall's gonna go into a marshal and bring that leg back down. And then we're gonna weight it down so you can see we have our on our Lila exogen sleeves with weights on them. So now you've got to go through that angular velocity with even more force because there's an added 500 grams. Let me go back here. You know how Louis Simmons had uh, a pit bull in his room? There's one of my cats, that's Captain. The dogs aren't allowed in the basement, but so Captain comes and hangs out downstairs because it's free pets and nobody else pets them. So then we're gonna take it one step more further. We're gonna take a marshal and go to one leg and I call these kangaroos. So here's Michael doing some kangaroos. A marshal to one leg and then bounce out. So again, we're trying to replace where that foot comes from and now we're gonna turn that whole leg into a lever. This is a phenomenal drill. Um, I've got about five kilos on the 1080 when he's pulling there, just so he doesn't take off. But you can see how well the ankle, the ankle complex has to work. So and then we want to work on our T-force. I'm not gonna steal Ken's fire here because I think I go first, but T-force is this angle here. How fast can we bring this in here and bounce it through? And I actually had a lot of improvement with average sprinters to make them into good sprinters with focusing on this. So one of the things we did, again, I have a 1080, so we used it. Um, I'm going to pull you so in order for you to not trip, that foot has to land underneath. So she's a good she's a good high school triple jumper and sprinter. But again, we're looking for split, split, and then bringing that snapping that foot down to get underneath. You know, you're replacing your other foot. I'm stealing that from a Darien bar. Or we just do a resisted T bound. So again, we're trying to replace and get that foot underneath. You can have a sled, you can have rubber bands, whatever you want. You don't have to have a 1080 to do this. So here's where it gets cool. So 1080 came up with uh, a release mechanism. So I'm gonna pull you to over speed and then when I click the clicker, the garage door opener, which you see in my right hand there, the release mechanism lets go and you'll see the 1080 attachment take off and we're going to do whether they're sprints or overspeed bounds. Uh, I kind of try to meet in the middle there so you're working on that T-force. You can see it snap off there. If she jams her feet in the ground at overspeed, it's not going to go well. So she's trying to think about doing a little mini bound and then you're going to try and keep that speed as long as you can. What was really interesting is she was an athlete that landed hard on the outside of her foot. Um, you could hear her come. Uh, you could hear the, the jam into the ground with both feet. We did this drill for a while and we actually had three, three workouts. And then she smashed her PRs and her fly times um, and she completely changed her gait. And there were three other girls with Glenn that had similar results just from doing that overspeed. Again, it doesn't have to be very far. You can daisy chain some rubber bands together. It's going to get the same thing. Or just kind of a slow down uh, bound will get you there. Uh, like what Michael is doing here. 
So he started off with bounds, and we're going to try and keep the, the amplitude of that thigh split when he goes, when it lets go and he goes to a sprint. And then here is a kangaroo, a weighted kangaroo. And then a kangaroo under tension. Kind of hard. And there's only one green rubber band on the leaper there, which makes it very difficult. And then when it all comes together, we're going to, again, really heavy bounds. I go really heavy because we don't have a lot of space when it's raining. We had three weeks where it never stopped raining here in Chicago, so we had to be in the basement for a while. Kind of sucked. But again, bounds to nowhere. You're trying to replace the foot, so you actually don't go very far if you're coming underneath. So... Then it changed a little bit. We started doing this actually after COVID and I decided to change prime times into bent knee prime times. The reason why I did this is you get a much better action what happens with your ankles and your knees and a split when you sprint. So here's Marshall coming through doing bent knee prime times. Again, I should have caught him earlier. But we can see his actual split when he's coming through and he's got to accelerate that bent knee a lot faster to make it through. With a straighter leg, you can't get the speed that you want to try to replicate that T-force. So I have, for my more advanced runners, we don't do straight leg prime times anymore. We do bent knee prime times. And I'm going to talk about when I do stiff leg prime times at the very end here. Here's Michael. We're going to squat down a little bit so he gets a little more shin angle coming through. So I called that a squatted bent knee prime time. Ooh, there's still some snow on the ground so you can see we were doing that probably in April. Uh, but this has become my new favorite drill, this bent knee prime time.